Howdy. If this video looks a little weird, looks a little different, I'm filming this on my iPhone because today is a very special day. We are going vlogging. Da -da 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 -da. I have never vlogged before. Um, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little scared, but I'm going to put my big girl panties on and try to ignore that there will be people who are looking at me. <laughs> but this is a very exciting day. A friend of mine and I are going to a book sale. If you're in Chicago, then you know that the Newberry Library book sale isn't happening. And I don't want to talk about it. I'm very upset. So one day I was just browsing. I'm like, I need to find a book sale. I need to scratch that itch. I need to go to a place where there's tons of used books for me to look at at cheap prices. Well, where is that? Give me that. And there's a whole website where you can find in your state what book sales, estate sales are happening. So I just happened to find one that is in the great suburb of Naperville, not one that we Chicagoans trash all the time. Sorry, Napervillians, if you're on here, but we are coming to your city to come raid you for books because they decided to just not do the Newberry Library book sale this year. So I thought I would take you along with me. I figure a lot of this I might just do voiceovers for because I'm too self-conscious to come in with my little mic. I'm probably just gonna be just, just browsing. Uh, my friend Meredith is joining us. She is a devoted follower of this channel, so she's going to be featured. And I'm so excited to take you along. I probably will give you a little bit of the car ride, give you a little bit of the, the book sale, and then I'll do a little haul if I wind up getting books. Um, saying it right now, I'm really trying not to get more than like five books, six books. Let's let's see how dedicated I am to that. My problem is I'll see them and they're so cheap. I'm like, why not? It's cheap. It's here. And then I come home and I have nowhere to put them and I can't read faster than I pick up books. So if you've seen one of my last videos, I have done a book haul and that was books that I got over a couple of months. But still, this I could do some serious damage here if this winds up being a good book sale. We'll, we'll see. It could be a complete bust. We could go and it, it's terrible. It's, it's shite. So I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. Let's go. I feel like in true vlogger fashion, I have to show you my outfit. It's just what has to be done. Ba, 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 ba. Here she is. I'm liking it. I feel like the dress is kind of giving Naperville, but then with a twist at the bottom of the pants and my little blue Merrells. Which are my little pop of color, but they're not Sambas because the Sambas thing is driving me crazy. I thought these were a little, little more different. I like them. And I have this tote bag from Carolyn Marie Reads. If you watch this channel, you probably watch her and I've mentioned her like a million times. But she made these tote bags one year where it has uh, Charlotte Bronte, it's got Jane Austen, and then on the other side it has Tolstoy, but you can't see, he's all smushed, and Dickens. And it says on the page, so it's a reversible tote. And I thought, what shows off that I'm super bookish and sophisticated than this tote bag? And I also have my little, my little squishmallow and he wants to come buy some books, doesn't he? So I'm ready, I'm ready to go, so. outside. Mwah. Beautiful. Okay, I have to get gas real quick. Fun fact, I'm from New Jersey. If you don't know this about New Jersey, uh, New Jersey is the only state in the union that doesn't pump their own gas, <laughs> which makes me useless. Uh, I did learn how to pump gas when I was learning to drive a car, but I didn't have to do it for a long time. And now that I've had this car here, I have to obviously pump gas. It fills me with so much anxiety. Like, I don't want to do this right now. I literally put off getting gas until the last second um, because I'm convinced I'm going to blow up. So fun. So fun. So uh, let's do this. I'm not going to blow up. Um, I'll be fine. It's just one of those things where I'm like, I get in my mind. I'm like, a professional is supposed to do this. A professional is supposed to handle this right now, not little old me driving my little car. I'm just a girl, but I guess I gotta, because I gotta be able to get to Naperville. <laughs> I live, I live to see another day. I hate getting gas. I hate it. I just, this is on my keychain. I'm not meant to pump gas. <laughs> Jersey girls don't pump their own gas. <laughs> We're good. 
made it finally it was a long drive <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> this is Meredith. Oh no, you can't see. <laughs> Go Lords. <laughs> Hi, it's the next day. I am showered. I'm rested. I drove back from frickin' Naperville. Hour-long drive back. Don't talk to me. <laughs> but well worth it. This was, this trip was well, well worth it. I got so many new books. Oops. <laughs> hey, not mad about it. These books were $2 each, except for this one at the top was a dollar. All in all, this came out to about 20 bucks. I'll take it. I'll take it, okay? Great books there. I think you saw the footage before. There were so many books, tables of them, some of which were just hilarious and were ones I was not going to take. Bridges of Madison County. You won't catch me ever purchasing that book because I hated it. But there were so many good options. And there were books in this list that I was like so happy to see it. There was one book where I literally had the thought like, I hope they have this book. And then they did. The universe just wanted me to have it. <laughs> I'm also filming in here today because I'm filming on my iPhone, so I thought the light was a little bit better in here. Sorry if the background's a bit distracting. You can see me, literally. Um, but I just think this is fun. I think for the vlog, it feels very informal. Like, I'm not sitting in my normal spot, so it feels fun to kind of, like, shake it up. So, we're in my bedroom. So, let's go through these books. I got some great stuff. So, I have... Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I have brought this up in my favorites video. This is one of my favorite books. I read this in high school and I loved it. But because I read it in high school and I borrowed a high school copy, I've never owned it. And so when I saw this and it was a dollar, I was like, I think I'm just gonna pick it up. She's in she's in pretty good condition. Someone bought her from Borders years ago. Rip to Borders. Someone bought this for $8.99 at Borders and I got it for a dollar. And I'm just so happy to have this book because I love this book. I've always wanted a copy and I just went, you know what, I'm just, I'm going to get it. So I'm very happy. Slaughterhouse Five. If you don't know, it's an anti-war book by Kurt Vonnegut uh, starring Billy Pilgrim as he travels through time and meets aliens. I don't know what else you want from a book. I really don't. Next was actually a recommendation from Meredith. She was like, hey, I know you like memoirs. And I went, girl, you're right. I do like memoirs. So she recommended The Liar's Club by Mary Carr. This is a memoir of this woman growing up in East Texas uh, with two very unstable parents. Uh, reading the back, I was like, this kind of is giving Glass Castle. Can't tell from the back if she has siblings or not, but it's giving kind of Glass Castle and that she has two very creative, very loving, but two very dysfunctional parents uh, and her growing up in, in that environment. And that is something that's very interesting to me. 
not a famous person, not someone you would necessarily know, but has had an interesting life. And that to me always makes it for a good memoir. So she put this in my hand and she was like, you need to read this. I think because you like memoirs, you're really going to like this. So I went, okay. And I was like, this is why I take you to these things because she gives me great recommendations. And most of the books she got were also recommendations of mine. Find yourself a good book buddy. If you're learning anything from this, find a good book buddy. Friends in literature are the best friends you're going to have. Next, uh, I got Trick Nearer by Gia Tolentino. This was also one that Meredith picked up and was like, have you read this? And I went, no, but yeah. Get them. I'm gonna take it. I've been wanting to get my hands on this for a little while. This is an older edition, I guess, because now it's kind of in like a yellow cover, but this is like the original black cover. Uh, this is just a bunch of essays written by Joel, Gia Tolentino um, about self-delusion, something I know nothing about. It's about self-delusion um, and just about living in the 21st century. I think it has to do a lot with women living in the 21st century, which girl, you're looking at her. You're looking at a 21st century woman. So I have been wanting to get this for a while. I don't often read essay collections, but I do like an essay collection. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. So I, I got this one. The next was one I was really excited to see because this is a nonfiction that I've been trying to get my hands on. I read the synopsis on Goodreads and I've just been like intrigued by this. And I've been thinking a lot about this book. And I found it in the nonfiction section. It's The Hair with Amber Eyes, A Hidden Inheritance by Edmund DeWall. This book seems so interesting to me. So Edmund DeWall in his family like has this collection of netsuke. Netsuke is a Japanese art of carving like little tiny wooden and ivory animal figurines. And his family has a bunch of them. And so he's like, he plays with them as a kid. And he's like, what are these things? And he finds out that this collection used to belong to a Jewish family who I believe they were in Austria. Yeah, they were in, v they were in Vienna. Um, and then this family, unfortunately, was a victim of uh, World War II, of the Holocaust. So I just thought that was so interesting because it's about these little art objects and how they came to be in possession of, of Edmund Wall and his family and the journey that they took through history. Being kind of an art history nerd, being a history nerd, uh, just a nerd. I was like, I, uh, I need this. I want to read this book. <laughs> and I found it. I was very happy to find it. So The Hair with Amber Eyes. Next is the book that I was literally to myself saying, I hope that I find Austerlitz by W.G. Sebald. And, um, they had it. <laughs> I really did manifest that. I was so happy to find it. Uh, this was highly recommended by uh, the Disco King, Alex. Uh, I've watched his videos before. He did a whole dedicated video on how much he loved this book. Like he only spoke about this book in the video, which told me that he loved it. And he spoke so highly of it and spoke so passionately about it that I was like, I really want to read that. Like that seems really interesting to me. Uh, it's about a child who gets adopted by an English family. He's coming from Germany, but he gets adopted by an English family during World War II. And then it's about him trying to, to like rediscover his past and his family life. And apparently the writing is superb. Unfortunately, this author passed away very shortly after this got published. I believe he died in an accident, some kind of accident. He prematurely passed away uh, because everybody was like, this book is a masterpiece. And he would have come out with a lot of great works had he lived. But everybody speaks so highly of this book so that I was thinking about it a lot. It was just like in my mind and thinking about it. And I found it. Also, I took the sticker off, although I kind of wish I didn't take the sticker off uh, because it was like now only four pounds, water stones. I'm like, oh, this came all the way. It was a British edition. This came all the way from a water stones, which I think is really cool. I've never been to water stones, but someday when I go back to London, I'm coming for you. This, this is one I picked up and was like, oh. And when we did our deliberations later about figuring out which books we were going to take and which books we weren't going to take, I was like, there's no question, I am getting this book. So next is Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verghese. Abraham Verghese is a fascinating author to me because he was a doctor originally. He's from India. He's a doctor. And then he just starts putting out books and people are like, dang, this, this man can write. And he's just written like acclaimed novel after acclaimed novel. His most recent one is A Covenant of Water. And First of all, the cover of that book is gorgeous. And second of all, I've just heard such good things about it. And so I was like, before I read that, like maybe I want to read one of his older works first. So this is Cutting for Stone. This is a beautiful cover, by the way. I'm obsessed with it. Marion and Shiva Stone are twin brothers born of a secret union between a beautiful Indian nun and a brash British surf. 
between a beautiful Indian nun and a brash British, I can't, oh my God, that is a tongue twister. Brash British surgeon, copper kettle, copper, copper kettle, a brash British surgeon orphaned by their mother's death and their father's disappearance, bound together by a preternatural connection and a shared fascination with medicine, the twins come of age as Ethiopia hovers on the brink of revolution. Like, so that sounds so interesting. I love a family drama. I love, I love when two siblings have to face the odds. I love when they don't know who their mother is. <laughs> I love a family drama. And I do not know of any books I've read that take place in Ethiopia. I'm going to say it. He is not Ethiopian, this author. He's Indian. So I find that interesting. It's set in Ethiopia. So I'm interested. I'm very interested. Next is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Gozi Adichie. She's a Nigerian writer. I do have Americana by her, which I think is one of her most well-known books. That's what my brother got for me and I still haven't read. However, I have been wanting to get my hands on this book. And this edition looks different than the one that I'm used to seeing. So I almost didn't recognize this book at first. And then I was like, oh, Oh wait, we know this. With effortless grace, Chimamanda Gozi Adichie illuminates a seminal moment in African history, Biafra's struggle to establish an independent republic in southeastern Nigeria during the late 1960s. We experience this tumultuous decade alongside five unforgettable characters, Ugwu, a 13-year-old houseboy who works for Onden, Onden Igbo, a university professor of revolutionary zeal, Olana, the professor's beautiful young mistress, and Richard, a shy young Englishman infatuated with Olana's willful twin sister, Kaneen. I hope I, I hope I pronounced that right. Half of a Yellow Sun is a tremendously evocative novel of promise, hope, and the disappointment of war. The disappointment of war. That's a really good phrase. Very interested in this book. A lot of these books are very shiny. I'm sorry if there's a glare. Next was one I was also super excited I saw. This is a nonfiction that I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while. And I've almost like when I'm ordering books online for my book club or just ordering books that I need, I am always about to buy this one. And then I'm like, nah, we'll wait. Like, I don't need it right now, blah, blah, blah. But when I went to the nonfiction section, this was almost like the first thing I saw. So we were about to leave. And then I was like, wait, I have to check the nonfiction history section. And she was like, okay. And I went, oh, I'm so glad I did because I found Nicholas and Alexandra by Robert K. Massey. She big, but comprehensive. This is about the last czar of Russia and his wife, Alexandra, the Grand Duchess. Uh, and this is just chronicling their life. I'm pretty sure it's going all the way from the be beginning of their lives and then their unfortunate uh, deaths in 1916. I'm good with history. Like I can like connect the dots, but my dates, I don't, I don't remember. I find this period of history to be fascinating and particularly Russian history, the Russian Revolution and the life of this family. I find fascinating. I was obsessed with the movie Anastasia growing up. I was obsessed. We rented that movie, I think like 20 times and I was in love with it. I remember watching it with my mom and her being like, oh, this is sad. And I was like, why? And she was like, this is a real story. Like these were real people. Anastasia was a real person. And I was like, oh, so her family in the movie, her family like gets on a train and abandons her. And then she's never able to find them again. And my mom was like, oh honey, that's not what happened. They got shot in the basement. <laughs> My mom telling me how it is, but that is that is the case. The movie always stuck with me and the story always stuck with me. So I have always wanted to get my hands on this book to do some like more reading into it. And I've just heard this is a great book. It's got photos on the inside, which we love. We love when a nonfiction book has a photo panel in the middle. So very happy about this book. Next is one I've also toyed with getting. I feel like I always see it at a thrift store or I always see it at a book sale. And I'm always like, I'm going to get it. And then I don't because <laughs> I'm a big fat liar. But I picked it up this time because I was like, you know what? It's hardcover and she's cute. She's a little gross on the on the sides, on the pages, but I don't really care about that. She was $2. Uh, it's Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. To be fair, this won the Pulitzer Prize. I don't really know much about this book at all. I just know that people are obsessed with it. I know it's supposed to be a very of literary merit if it won the Pulitzer. I don't know much about it, though. In 1956, toward the end of Reverend John Ames' life, he begins a letter to his young son, an account of himself and his forebears. Ames is the son of an Iowa preacher and the grandson of a minister who, as a young man in Maine, saw a vision of Christ bound in chains and came west to Kansas to fight for abolition. 
he preached men into the Civil War, then at age 50 became a chaplain in the Union Army, losing his right eye in battle. Reverend Ames writes to his son about the tension between his father, an ardent pacifist, and his grandfather, whose pistol and bloody shirts concealed in an army blanket may be relics from the fight between the abolitionists and those settlers who wanted to vote Kansas into the Union as a slave state. Whoa, family tensions. <laughs> you know that awkward moment when you want people to be free, but your dad wants them to be enslaved. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? But yeah, this this has family drama written all over it. It's historical fiction, which we love. And it just seems intriguing to me. I've, I've always heard about this book. This is always on lists of like books you need to read before you die. And I've just always been interested. I've always been fascinated by this book. So I finally got it. It's hard, kind of hard to see, but it has this kind of like kind of crackled painted door motif on the front. Very interesting to me. I didn't really know it was Civil War based, <laughs> but uh, I'll read it. Civil War books and me don't always get along. I didn't like Cold Mountain. Didn't like that book, but I did like Gone with the Wind when I read it a long time ago. So it might be time to, to bring in some new historical fiction in Civil War. Yeah. Then the last one I got, uh, also, this was like the first book I picked up when I went in and Meredith was like, oh, I love John Irving. And I went, okay. It's the Cider House Rules by John Irving. It's this nice, big, hardcover with John Irving on the back. Looking, looking kind of handsome. I won't lie. So this is about a doctor in Maine. I believe it's like turn of the century. He adopts a boy or there's a boy at this orphanage that isn't getting adopted basically and he kind of takes him under his wing uh and this is a doctor in maine and he also is performing abortions slay slay king yeah so i don't know i've never read anything by john irving i know people love the world according to garp and people love a prayer for owen meany i was kind of choosing between this and a copy of a prayer for owen meany but i really i'm really drawn to this book especially with the discussions of abortion i am finding i'm drawn to literature uh that speaks about this topic i wonder why why would i be interested in that in this day and age in in 2024 in this post Roe v. Wade world I'm living in. Why would I be fascinated by that? I am interested in when authors tackle this and especially in a historical context. So I'm excited. I'm excited to pick this one up. I have A Widow for One Year. I have that book, but I really feel like this should be the one that I start with because I've heard like mixed things about A Widow for a Year and I've heard more positive things about this book. Also, the movie is Tobey Maguire, which I think is interesting. I don't know why. <laughs> Those are the books that I got. Um, you may think, Catherine, you're crazy. Why are you keep buying these books? And I go, I know, I know. Um, they were cheap. This whole haul was $20. It was $20 that went to a good cause. And it scratched that itch. It scratched that I need to go to a book sale and just see a whole room of books. It scratched that itch for me. So we're good now. <laughs> I think I need to like slow my roll. Now, if I'm out and about and I see a little book that I like, I may pick it up. I mean, did, that last book haul I did was all books I'd gotten over a couple months. I can't keep buying them in this fashion, like in these in these all at once hauls, uh, because I just simply don't have the room. I don't have the room, but I was still happy I went. We you know we had to drive. We had a journey. We drove out there in rush hour traffic. But you know what? It was worth it. It really was worth it. And they said, they were like, oh, did you hear about us? They were so friendly at this book sale. And they were like, we do this every year. And I'm like, I will be back because the Newberry Library book sale isn't happening. So I will make the trip out there. We got dinner afterwards. It was lovely. Like I had a great time. So I will probably do this again. If this is happening next year, I'm on their email list now. <laughs> they know me. Uh, I will definitely go back and, and get some more books. Here they are. Yeah. So that's my, that's my little vlog. That's my little haul. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a fun time. If you like this content, if you want me to do more vlogs, let me know. I know this one was probably a little rough. I've never vlogged before. So if you have pointers, if you have tips, tricks, things, let me know. I'm going to keep watching a bunch of vlogs on YouTube. Ugh, twist my arm, watch some like book vlogs but I'll do some research and see how other people are doing vlogs because I am curious in going into this mode it's a little bit more labor intensive uh, but it's worth it I think they I like watching these as a as a content viewer 
So thinking of it that way, I think I want to keep making them. So if you like this content, please let me know. If you hate these, if you're like, Catherine, get back in that little room and sit in that chair and don't go anywhere and just do your little book. I'll do it. I'll do it. Jeez. But thank you so much. If uh, this is your first time, hope you like, comment, subscribe, share the video, do what you want to do. I'm always happy to have you. Leave your comments below and I hope you have a good day. Go get some books. Go find your local used book sale. Go do it. But thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs>